Imagine that your life is a tale that you are the primary author of. What settings would you like for the backdrops of all you do? As the author, what supportive characters would you like included in this play that is you? What plot arcs do you want to include? What challenges? Redemption? Resolution? Outcomes? Welcome to another episode of The Plant Healer's Path. If you happen to be enjoying these conversations, you can help me reach a whole lot more people by punching the like button, leaving a comment down below, and especially sharing the links to these videos with other people that you know. Today, we're going to have another list, but this time it's a list of questions. 20 questions, in fact. 20 questions that can help you live a better life life. 1. If you knew this was to be your final year on this planet, what exactly would you do differently? What would you like to do? How would you like to spend your remaining time? And with whom? Tell me, what projects would you give your precious remaining hours to? What experiences would you try to pack in? What guilty pleasures would you want to indulge in and linger with? Two, what do you do now that you'd want to avoid if it was your final year? What would you want to spend your time away from instead of with? Would you want to be where you live and work now? Could you stand to be apart from the person that you're currently living with or the people that you generally work around? Would you really choose to stick to your usual schedule and routines? Would you still be okay with standing in checkout lines? Okay with using up the hours of your day trying to get somewhere in a car or with making small talk just to be polite? Would you be as accepting as always of loud, unpleasant noises like neighborhood sirens or planes roaring overhead? Would you still feel just as tolerant of bigotry, entitlement, unkindness, or injustices if this were your last year? Three. Even if you could be sure of living another 100 or 200 years, do you really think that life couldn't use a little reappraisal and renovation? Such as asking yourself, what truly serves your health and wholeness? What truly serves your heart and calling? Serves your aims and dreams? And what do you do or put up with just because it's expected of you? If you were to make a priority list right now of what's important to you, what things do you think deserve the top spot on that list? And what kinds of things might get bumped down just a little closer to the bottom? Four. Think about it. Who in your life would trigger the greatest pain or the greatest longing if they happened to move away? What's important then that to tell them right now, in person, while they're residing close enough to hear you? Five. What feels most important for you to always embody? Six. What acts or, or ways of being do you consider honorable or dishonorable? This is important. What do you think of as being your most essential principles? What actions or ways of being do you consider to be inviolable, unbreakable? Seven. Ask yourself, under what circumstances does accommodating some person or protocol actually serve you? And when... Might it compromise your needs, compromise your ethics or your aims? On the other hand, eight. 
When might your resistance to adjusting, your resistance to adapting, harm you or harm your hopes? Nine. Give us give it just as much thought as it needs. What would you say is your overriding, most meaningful purpose on this planet in these times? And what can you learn or what can you do to further inspire, empower, equip, and energize that purpose? Ten. What kind of a healer or other practitioner would you most like to be? Do you think you'd be more effective or feel more fulfilled as a community dispenser of herbs and advice? Or as a grower or wildcrafter? As a defender of wild habitats? Or as a medicine maker, an herb seller, an author, or a teacher? Would it be best for you and your purpose to make a business out of things? Or to keep it as a passionate interest, a useful hobby, or an entirely free service to the world instead? 11. List all of the kinds of things that you want to learn if you had the means and the time to give to learning. 12. What factors hinder your learning? And what do you got to do to ensure your desired studies and developed understandings continue? 13. What do you think is most crucial for you to communicate to the world in these times? 14. Do you occasionally get into conflicts without first understanding what the other person might be saying, feeling, needing, or intending? Do you sometimes get so caught up in your thoughts and your agendas that you miss out on the messages and the colors and the sense of the garden or the forest that you're actually walking through? Do you ever find yourself eating a meal without hardly noticing the panoply of textures and tastes or find yourself making love with your mind off somewhere else? Fifteen. Take a sensorial inventory of your home, of your apothecary or your pantry, your yard, and your favorite places to walk or to gather plants, and then consider. Consider which specific sights and sounds and smells would you be saddest to never experience again, and which of these convey to you the most information, the most inspiration, which contribute most to your sense of connection or delight. 16. If you think of this world as an organic composition, as an evolving song, then what notes and melodies, what inflections, what special effects would you like to add? 17. What's your personal definition of beautiful? Now, using your own personal metric, what do you find to be beautiful in your world? And what can you do to make the things that you find less appealing more and more lovely? 18. What might be biggest ass mistake that you could ever make in your lifetime. And of course, what do you need to do to make sure that shit never happens? 19. What's the most useful or precious thing that anyone could ever give to you? Once you got a clear picture of what that might be, question if it's something that you can possibly give to yourself. And finally, 20. Ask yourself, what things in your life bring you 
the greatest meaning? What things strengthen your vitality? What things encourage and support your excitement to be alive? What things help you thrive? Once you've answered the above 20 questions, you'll have in hand the beginnings of what I think of as a personal yardstick, a yardstick by which you can measure your desires and measure your needs, calibrate your proclivities and preferences, and assess your aspirations and your efforts and your effects. Your deeply honest replies are meant to be guidelines and standards that help you get a custom hack and custom tweak your very existence. With these parameters made clear to you, it'll become obvious which options and choices are going to be best for you, for your worthy goals, for your dear missions. Acting on this self-knowledge is never going to be easy. But this kind of self-inquiry makes it possible for us to prioritize what ideas and what activities matter most to us make it possible for us to garner the kinds of positive results that we're actually intending. Activation is requisite. If we're ever to wholly be our authentic selves, or if we're ever going to accept and enjoy the attendant rewards. Activation is the next step if we're really going to honor, maximize, and utilize the finest aspects of what we are the finest aspects of what we can be. Applying your understandings and evaluations is going to make it possible for you to avoid at least some of the soul-sapping situations and piss-poor decisions into the future. These 20 are just some of the questions that can help us to make the most of opportunities and savor the many blessings that come our way providing ourselves with the gift of a genuinely bettered life. Bravely ask yourself, my friends, and then lovingly 